Hi everyone, welcome to an all new episode of The Griddle. I'm Josh Paris and let's see what's cooking. This is a show where we interview people in media, music, and talent. In this episode, we will cover a topic about designing. It plays an important role in problem solving as it helps identify and address challenges through a creative and systematic approach. It includes a lot of researching, brainstorming, and prototyping to find brand new solutions that meet people's needs. Speaking of designing, let's meet our talent. Their name is Tai Bracy, and she does designing as a hobby. Why don't you say hi to us, Tai? Hi, everyone. Hi. That's how are you doing? How's your day going today? It's going great. How was your day? My day is going pretty good. All right, you're welcome. It's great to have you on here. I'm looking forward to hearing more about you and your experiences. This will be our student talk. It'll be more of a conversation, so feel free to share your thoughts freely. There are no right or wrong answers, so just be yourself. If you need a moment to clarify something at any point, don't delay to let me know. Shall we get started? Absolutely. All right, that's good. Let's get started. So I heard about doing designing, but what kind of design designing do you do? I do all types of designing. I have done um, designing for many corporations. I've done it for my own personal clients. Um, I've done, uh, just to name a few type of designing I've done, is a lot of graphic designing for reproductive health companies, nonprofits, and even Kane University. Oh, nice. That's very interesting, for Kane University? Yes. That's amazing. Oh, and how did you first get into, into designing, and what made you get into it? Absolutely. Um, my first role um, in designing was actually at Kane in the Writing Center as a social media specialist, which was um, a really good opportunity to get my feet in the door. Um, so, yes. That's interesting. All right, that's good to hear. But where do you find your inspiration for your designing? Honestly, I feel like I find it through like everyday life. Um, I'm really big on social media, so um, a lot of it is through my news feeds, what I'm watching, what I'm listening to, the people I surround myself with. I mean, that's interesting. That's a really good inspiration. And have you ever developed a new approach to a problem? If so, what was it in your designing? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I found a new approach in designing. I have found new approaches as far as a way, like a workflow, a way of doing things. That's really good. And have you ever overcame an obstacle? If so, what was it in designing? To me, the obstacle is always getting started. <laughs> yes. That's a, that's a hard thing, getting started with your, pro with your projects. Absolutely. So what software programs are you skillful in? Uh, so I do like Adobe Premiere, um, but mainly it's Canva. Canva? Yes. Oh, Canva, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a lot of people use Adobe, but Canva, that's, that's different. So do you have a favorite medium like, or style that you work in, in with your designs? Um, I would say, as far as like graphic designing, medium-wise, I like carousels. carousels. I think carousels are very informative. Um, you swipe, get to the next one. Um, I think it's more intriguing than a single image ad. That's interesting. That's very good to hear. And what are the biggest challenges you face as a designer so far? Um, I think trying to capture my target audience target would probably audience. be uh, definitely pretty difficult for me. Um, you want it to be engaging to like your audience. So. Yeah, exactly. You mm -hmm. want to captivate the people you are trying to reach with your work. Exactly. That's cool. And what new design, tr what new design trends or technologies excite you the most in the future coming up? I like AI. You like AI, yeah, like AI, AI is pretty interesting. There's a lot of um, integrations with AI, Canva, yeah. um, and I'm very interested in using the human, you still need the human touch now, yeah. but the combination of both I think will magnify everything. Yeah, like it can't be all AI, you got to add the human in it Absolutely. too, you know, to make it work. So how do you balance aesthetics with functionality in your designs? So. Um, like I said before, I like everything to be very engaging. So uh, when I think of aesthetics, I'm thinking like everything being very um, cohesive. So the branding, the colors, the fonts, yeah. but functionality, it needs to make sense. You need exactly. to be, the maybe the wording that I'm putting on it needs to match everything. It shouldn't just be um, aesthetically pleasing, but then it has no purpose. Yeah, exactly. You got to make it all work out so it faces your goal for your work. Absolutely. That's cool. So what are you passionate about when it comes to your designing and how do you, like your view of the world, how do you use that in your designing? Yeah, so I'm definitely a passionate person about my designing. Um, I think I'm most passionate about 
results. So if I'm doing it for a client or a company, I want to produce the results as far as the likes or maybe comments, really the engagement with the post, um, I'm probably most passionate about. That's cool, that's cool. So what are your short-term and long-term goals as a designer? A uh, short-term goal is probably utilizing my designing skills in um, every asset of my life. So. Um, as a communication specialist at Kane or um, any other employment I get in the near future. Long term, I do want to start my own company um, and offer um, designing services. How far along do you see your company being, like a couple years, or are you still working towards that? Definitely still working towards that. Um, as I just obtained uh, my education, I'm going to further my education and get a doctorate. So I do want to finish that first before, um, I guess, putting full time into my business. You got that, you got that, hard work. <laughs> so how do you handle feedback or criticism from uh, uh, on your designs? Absolutely, I really encourage uh, feedback and criticism. I think um, there's always room for improvement and I feel like um, it can really help me grow yeah. to get that feedback. Yeah, to hear what you're doing wrong and to fix that for your future work. Absolutely. That's a good approach on your f criticism and feedback. And how do you stay creatively inspired, especially when you face creative blogs? Uh, yeah, so I like to like research like the top companies that I like. So I love Starbucks, for instance, and look at like what they're doing yeah. designing-wise, because they're a very big, flourish company, um, and just kind of grow inspiration from what the companies I love is doing. Yeah, there's a lot of inspiration out there, so you can make your work better. Yes. So. How do you push yourself creatively, creatively outside of your work projects? Uh, I think doing fun stuff. I love art, so I, I'm really into doing, um, like, molding like clay together or painting, drawing, um, just doing something on my own personal time that's not work-related. Yeah, it's good to get things outside of work and have your own personal life every day. Absolutely. So how do you manage deadlines while maintaining a balance between work and personal life? Deadlines are extremely important, uh, no matter <laughs> what field you're in. Um, but I manage it through like planners, schedules. I, I know with myself um, priorities, knowing what needs to happen first, um, what's more going to take more time than another project. Um, so really, just uh, prioritizing um, what needs to take place first. Yeah. So very fascinating. And how do you incorporate sustainability or ethical considerations into your design work? Uh, that's a really good question. So as of now, I haven't had to face that as of yet, um, just because I'm designing on Canva, on through the internet. Uh, so they're really, I haven't had to encounter anything um, with sustainability in my design work. Yeah, that's good. And what role do you think design plays in shaping social or environmental change? Um, another really good question. Um, as far as, I mean, I feel like design work uh, pretty much shapes everything. Um, from an environmental standpoint, um, it's probably like when you're thinking about when people went from like designing straws, yeah. for instance, um, or New Jersey went away with plastic bags. Yeah. So <laughs> designing from a much larger scale. Yeah, that's cool to see like the progress throughout the years and how everything works. So how do different cultures or backgrounds influence your design approach? Um, I feel like I like to incorporate all different cultures in my design work. Um, because when you're creating content for the masses, uh, is everyone. So no one should feel excluded. Everything should be inclusive. Of course. So what do you do outside of design that contributes to your creativity? Um, outside of like actually designing like a graphic design work, uh, I'm a big writer. Uh, so I, I wrote uh, for the college newspaper actually here at, at the Tower um, during my undergrad years. Um, I've written blogs for various companies. Um, so I'd say writing is probably like a really big thing. So for you, how would you define like a good design? I feel like a good design like ca captures anyone. Um, with the social media world that we live in, you're scrolling through, it's very manifested and there's a lot going on. Yeah. Uh, what's going to make someone stop on your, on the, 
the graphic design that you created. Exactly. So you gotta make your thing pop out out of all the other designs that are out exactly. there. Exactly. So how do you adjust your design approach when working for print, digital, or physical spaces? Um, so I mostly work in digital now with being 2024, print has slowed down a lot. Um, but for digital, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, you're good. It's like, how do you, how do you adjust your like design approach? Like how you do your designs regularly when working for a different like print, digital, or physical spaces? But you mostly work in digital spaces, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think for that, I just, to adjust it, um, I pretty much probably just familiarize myself with the platform that I'm using. Yeah. So like Canva or Adobe or anything like that. Um, really, because they're always doing new stuff with those platforms. Yeah, There's always exactly. new functionalities and features. So just staying up to date with that. Yeah. That's great. So how do you push the boundaries of your creativity and innovation in your design work? Um, when I think of innovation, I'm thinking of doing something that hasn't been done before, um, which is quite hard to do because <laughs> yeah. uh, a lot has been done. Um, but I really like, I feel like my creative mind is unique and separate from everyone. So I try to use, um, really owning on my creativity. Yeah. So can you describe a project where you had to create a cohesive design across multiple media platforms? Yeah, absolutely. So I worked for a law firm um, as a marketing um, person, and uh, one big thing was Legal Week. So I had to uh, create content um, across LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and even YouTube. And um, yeah, I had to pretty much, what I try to do is be cohesive, but I don't want to produce the same content for each page because each page uh, serves a different purpose. Like LinkedIn is more business oriented yeah. than Instagram or TikTok or um, Facebook. Um, so really making sure my messaging and uh, brand is staying the same. Yeah, for what you're putting out there. That's cool that you got the experience with the legal week, right? So mm -hmm. it's like you put out content for the legal firm? Legal services, yeah. That's interesting, that's interesting. So could you briefly describe one of your favorite projects and why it stands out to you? Oh man, my favorite project. Um, ooh, what is? It could be anything. I know. <laughs> um, I will say I worked for a reproductive health company and I had to um, promote a IRMA report, which is essentially a report that helps um, women get pregnant and build families. Okay. Uh, I think that was probably my most favorite, um, just because it's very meaningful and so yeah. impactful. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing that you're doing work that's actually impactful for the people in the society and your environment. Absolutely. Yeah. So one more question before we hit to the hit the last segment: How do you measure the success of a design? Oh man, honestly, um, that's going to my analytical tools. So um, I use like HubSpot, Salesforce, things of that nature, and it's like running like basically my campaign. So likes, comments, impressions, um, views, um, most of all engagement, website clicks. Um, mm -hmm. I look at everything. Yeah, you gotta see everything so how you work it out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so that's all the questions that we have for now. Next up, we're going to be interviewing people around the campus about designing. And after that, Tai will present what kind of designs that she has in our final segment. We'll be right back after the break. Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Arfano, and today we're going to be talking about journalism. In today's world, it's more important than ever to have good news literacy. By that, I mean having the ability to judge and analyze the reliability of news and information. It's also important to sort through the facts to discover what the truth really is. In a world that is consumed by fake news, it's important to know what the truth is and where it is. The headline might be uh, fake, uh, the first paragraph might be fake. If writing isn't your strong suit, that's no problem at all. Here at Kane, journalists get the ability to practice and perfect the writing by working for the Tower for a total of three semesters. With different focuses like sports writing, feature writing, writing for the web, journalists have so many different options to choose from. So come check us out on the fourth floor of CAS. Every day, more and more college students choose to drink more coffee and not get enough sleep. 
This results in them sleeping during class, in obscure places in public, and when they're trying to study. Make sure you get enough sleep. Don't always rely on coffee. Stairs. Four out of five college students suffer from fear of stairs. Whether it be to the first floor, the third, or the sixth, the fear is strong. But we need to stop this. We need to work together and conquer these stairs, step by step. So stop taking the elevator, take a deep breath, and take the first step to a new you. Hi, this is Tyreek Garmini. What's cooking on the street next is the street interview. All right, who am I here with? Sean Santos. All right, what's your favorite kind of art? Um, I like the Renaissance type of art. So I'm an architecture major and we study different types of art styles and architecture styles. So the Renaissance era was definitely a impact on art styles in general. Okay. What was your opinion on these three designs? Oh, they're for shoes? I like them. I like, I, I watch a lot of anime. And I know it's Itadori. And this is definitely a cool scene. This is for his black flash. And that's great too. I love how they uh, implement the contrast between the light and the dark in between them. And it's very gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, who, right, who am I here with? Hisella. What what do you what kind of favorite art do you like? I really like the style of art deco. And then also painting wise, I really like impressionism, especially Claude Monet. Okay. What comes to your mind when you think about good design? Good design, I think about functionality and how aesthetically pleasing it is, especially if something is able to do multiple things at once. I really like something that is very versatile. All right, what's your opinion on these three designs? It's pretty cool. To be honest, I don't know. Oh, that's cool. Is that a uh, Jujutsu Kaisen? I believe so, I just found these. I like Jujutsu Kaisen. Those are pretty good. No, I just found some mud. I just found some designs that I like. Oh, and just search them. Thank you. Have a nice day. Move a little closer. Move a little closer. Alright, who am I here with? Uh, Romeo. Alright, what's your favorite kind of art? Uh, I love paintings. Alright, what comes to mind? What comes to your mind when it comes to good design? Uh, I like a lot of colors. I like a lot of abstract, you know, stuff, stuff that is very unique. I don't really like plain stuff. I like stuff that really pop out and really catch the eye. All right. What's your opinion on these three designs? Oh, that's hard. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, I love anime drawings. That's, that's tough. All right. Thank you. Hello. Yep, that's all. Have a nice day. Who am I here with? I'm with Kelsey. Um... What's your favorite kind of art? Favorite kind of art? Um, I like drawing and sculpting. What comes to mind when it comes to good design? Um, good design, I feel like the thought put into it and like the creativity and I guess the emotion into it. Okay. What do you think about these three designs? at King Galleries. All right. What what favorite kind of art do you like? Hmm. I want to say like impressionism because I like how um, colors can be like like blues or any like reds can be like so highly saturated and how like the emotion is so strong within the art. Okay. What comes to your mind when you think about good design? Good design. Well, nowadays I know like streetwear is in style, but I really do like the um, classic like, suit and tie look. So I really like um, am more attracted to like the YSL or like the um, old old Dior. And um, 
I just really like the like the whole like nice sleek and like chic fashion. So I know today is like blah, but you know <laughs> I'm on a clock, so you know I can't really do much. Okay. What do you think about these three designs? Not bad. You know, I really like sneakers can go with any single thing. And um you can and if you want to like um if more on the younger side, if you want to style it up with uh uh, like a nice like big blazer and big pants with some up sneakers. I feel like that's a really good um, trend right now. Okay. What about this one? Is that one Jujutsu Kaisen? Maybe. <laughs> um, I do like that too. It's um, it kind of gives me the old '90s um, animation style with the 2D. I feel like we need to bring that back more. And of how like you can see in the process of how the animator is like animating, which is like just like a then pa. That's really good. Um, this that was like um reminds me of that old gargoyle movie from like I'm not sure it's the 40s or 50s, but um I really like that too. I really like the supernatural and all like the horror movie stuff and all the horror movie elements, especially for this time of year. It's um it's a really good thing to just like you shouldn't be scared of anything that's like permanently evil. Like you should like embrace everything that's like a meaning to the end. And I like things because like it's spooky. Okay. All right. That's all for now. Thank you. No problem. Finally Thursday. Tonight's the night. Are you ready? You know I can't. I have that test tomorrow that I've been talking about. Cognitive dissonance, huh? What? Cognitive dissonance. The state of having two conflicting thoughts. What? Basically when you can't decide on something because the two things you want to do are contradictory to each other. So for example, you want to go out, but you know you should study for your test. And how do I fix this exactly? You either have to change your beliefs or you have to change your actions. Where did you even learn this? I can't even spell cognitive dissonance. I'm a comm studies major, remember? Yeah, 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 whatever. All right, well, I guess I'm staying home because there's no way I'm gonna survive tomorrow without studying. Whatever, suit yourself. On a daily basis, we're met with many inconveniences, such as road work, traffic, or poorly written laws and regulations. Well, the solution is you. Yes, you. By visiting the website www.nj.gov elections, you can find out information regarding the local politicians running in your area. It's up to us as a community to discuss the changes we would like to see happen by voting in our local election November 6th. Trick-or-treating is something very fun for kids. But it can turn scary for parents. After a night of trick-or-treating, be sure to check your child's candy for any sort of tampering. It could save their life. Welcome back. To Welcome back to The Girl, everyone. I'm your host, Josh, and now we're going to ask some of the students at the Kane campus about designing. Welcome back to the girl, everyone. This is Josh again. Sadly, we reached the final part of our show. But, but before it's over, Tai wants to show, show you some things about her designing. Yes, so um, the first piece of design that I have here is for 365 Noor, one of my clients that I work um, for as a freelancer. Um, so up top, you'll see um, a design basically really featuring the totes and the different products um, that the website was offering. Um, so most of my designs here would all um, redirect the um, shoppers to the website because ultimately we wanted to have a design and turn it to a sale and a repeat customer at that. That's very nice. 
The second company I have here is Pregnune. I was a social media manager here and I was doing um, the reproductive health company. So a lot of this content was very much um, more heavy, um, but I, in the middle here, have a picture um, that I designed for a new partnership that the business, um, the company Pregnune partnered with another business. Uh, so that's what the middle one will uh, show. Then I have a more lighthearted one about friendship. I think it was like National Friendship Day. Um, and then I had some more that's like research based um, for this one. And lastly, I have Kane, the learning commons. So um, I did some of this design work um, for our social media channel, for our Instagram. One is being Pride. Um, so we do a lot of different workshops, um, really um, going over like the databases and the resources available for students. So for the Pride Month, we talked about um, resources around that holiday. Um, I also did most of them, I think all of them, um, will do feature like a database or a resource. And then um, lastly, I did um, the database um, and resource carousel post, and that was just like the, the main cover. Those are awesome designs, all of them. It shows your hard work. I like this. It. Very nice. Thank you. Of course. You're welcome. Now, before the show ends, I got a little bit more questions. So how do you curate your design portfolio to showcase your adaptability or style? Yeah, so when I did my portfolio, I'm really trying to show my versatility. So in that, I'm showing work from different companies so that they can see, like, um, I guess, the broader horizon. I don't just do education or reproductive health or legal. Just any service or field that you throw at me, I can produce content for. You can do everything. Absolutely. You got it, yeah. All right. So what criteria did you use to select the projects featured in your portfolio? In your portfolio? Um, I chose, I feel like, pieces that I thought really um, hit the target audience and that uh, got the most engagement and um, the likes that I wanted. And then something that's really like aesthetically pleasing, yeah. very balanced. Yeah, put that into consideration. Absolutely. So how do you approach brainstorming and con conceptualization for your designs? Brainstorm is, is extremely important. Uh, when I think of designing, first I have to come up with the social media strategy. So yeah. what content am I even producing, what the topic is. Um, so I like to do brainstorming collaboratively. I think uh, multiple minds is better than one. Um, so in that, I'm brainstorming from the trends, research. Uh, I'm, re I'm brainstorming from what I did before um, to you know, from the results that I got from uh, pr previous campaigns and designs to really own in on what I should do to improve, to do better. Yeah, you can always do better. Absolutely. So how did you design this project with the target audience in your mind? Um, yeah, so let's use the KNTL, um, NTLC for example. It's university, it's education, it's students. Um, I feel like the Learning Commons is like the heart of the campus yeah. um, of many other areas on campus as well. So I'm really targeting students and we do so much in the Learning Commons with the resources that maybe like a writing session or academic session or um, public speaking. So many resources that students are very unfamiliar with that yeah. we provide. Uh, I keep that in mind when I'm producing my content because the whole point is, oh, let's re register for this event. It's online yeah. or it's in person, you know. So I think um, I keep that in mind. Yeah, like get the word out and get the people coming out. Absolutely. So is there a project on your portfolio that you're particularly proud of? If so, why? Um, I would say out of the stuff that's on my portfolio, I think I, I'm proud of the um, 365 NOR um, because it was a small business and yeah. you have to start somewhere. Yeah, exactly. um, so being able to help them, um, even if it's just like website visibility, social media presence, uh, they started from nothing. I had to you know, create the um, digital presence as far as like an Instagram and a Facebook and all that. And just seeing it grow, yeah. seeing the followers grow is nice. That's amazing. You just brought them up from the bottom and then you're bringing them up. Absolutely. It's amazing. So what were the main goals for this portfolio and how did you ensure those goals were met? Um, so the main goals for the portfolio is to showcase that um, I'm the go-to person for anything. So if you want something digitally designed, I can produce it no matter, you know, 
the target audience, the scale, the company. So I really um, wanted to make sure in my um, digital portfolio that my design showcased that um, I can pretty much design anything that needed to be designed, yeah. that they wanted. And I showcased that very well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, our all right, that's very good advice. I want to thank you, Tai, for being a part of this show. Absolutely, thank you for having me. It of was course, a great pleasure. All right, everyone, that's all the time that we have for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's show, and we'll see you next time on an all-new episode of On the Griddle.